Hello, I'm Dwayne Reed, and welcome to Buy Local TV, where we promote Michigan businesses, communities, and its people. In episode 63, we travel to Frankenmuth, Michigan. Some people come for the shopping. Christmas year-round at Bronner's. Or for famous chicken dinners at Zender's. Or walk across the street to the Bavarian Inn. Me, however, <laughs> I come for the beer. I'm Tammy Meyer. I'm the assistant general manager here at Frankenmuth Brewery. Uh, we're located downtown on the main drag of Frankenmuth, Michigan. Um, of course, we specialize in the beer. Uh, we're very well known. Um, this has been the site of beer making since 1862. Uh, we also have a great menu here. So while we specialize in the beer, we also have something to share for the non-beer drinkers. Uh, we have lots of families and a great kids menu. Um, we're well known for our burgers and our pizzas. Um, some of those foods that go real well with the beer pairing. Uh, my name is Jeff Kuhn. I'm the brewmaster at Frankenmuth Brewery here right in downtown Frankenmuth, Michigan. And we're all about the beer here uh, at Frankenmuth. Beer has been brewed on this site since 1862, which makes us the oldest operating brewery in the state of Michigan, which is kind of an exciting thing. And because we're in a German town, we do a, a large portion of our beer, our German beers, both lagers as well as ales and then I do a variety of other beers as well. And on a hot, humid summer day like today, this beer is pretty darn tasty, that's for sure. Watch, I'm gonna make the guy drool behind the camera. Oh yeah, that's awesome. This is malted barley, and this malted barley um, is the prime ingredient in the beer that we make here at Frankenmuth Brewery. And what we do is we get the barley and then we crush it upstairs in our mill. And what we're trying to do is separate the germ from the husk because it's the, uh, the germ that we take and convert those starches in that germ to sugars so that I can ferment to make beer. This process is called? This is the uh, mash kettle. Uh, and in the mash kettle, we mix the malted barley with hot water at a certain temperature and we cook it or mash it for 60 minutes. After that happens, then we take the entire mash, now it's called, and we transfer it over to the kettle in which I'm leaning against. It's called the louder ton. And here in the louder ton, all we're doing is we're separating that sweet liquid from the grain that's left behind because I no longer need this grain. But the beauty of this grain is I don't just take and throw it away. This particular grain here, I give to a local farmer and he feeds his cows and sheep with it. So then uh, we separate it and then we send that liquid back to our boil kettle. And in the boil kettle, we boil it. And we boil this for anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes. And that's when we add these beautiful things called hops. And the hops are what give a uh, beer, it's, uh, it's flavor profile, if you will. Uh, things like boldness and spiciness, and some would even say a little bitterness, uh, which are all uh, important things because the hops balance out the sweet flavors from the malt itself, which is a, a sweet product. After that boiling takes process, then we take and we transfer it over to the final vessel called the Whirlpool. And in the Whirlpool, we're just whirlpooling out all the things that we put in, like the hops, like any of the proteins that coagulate together because of the boiling process and to get it ready to send to the fermenter uh, a very clear liquid. This is the fermentation building and in the fermentation building we take that sweet liquid that we produced in the brew house and we turn it into beer because it doesn't become beer uh, until we add that little ingredient called yeast because the yeast which is alive cultures uh, they actually begin um, fermenting or consuming the sugars there and then we have some byproducts, byproduct one being ethanol, which people like, which is the alcohol. We have carbon dioxide, which people like, is because that's the carbonation in the beer. And so the beer here will sit, uh, depending on the beer, it'll take anywhere from uh, two weeks to uh, 50 days to produce it. Uh, your normal ales are 14 days and, and done. Uh, reason being for that is that they ferment at warm temperature. Uh, which is room temperature and so they ferment very quickly and they mature uh, pretty quickly so after they're done fermenting then we cold condition them and in 14 days they can go right to the glass um, or keg or bottle or however we're gonna package it and so here in the fermentation building that's where we make this magic happen and when we use the yeast then we, re uh, we recover the yeast and reuse that time after time again until I can't use it any longer and that's how we create beer here Right now we're distributed, I have 13 distributors that handle the state of Michigan, and so we are all over the state. So wherever you go, ask them for it. Ask for Frankenmuth beer. This is our uh, cellar area where we take the finished beer and we process it and package it. This first uh, packaging machine here helps us package it 
into kegs. We have both half barrels, which is for someone with a large thirst, and this one is actually partially full, um, or we have one six barrels, which is about a third of the volume of this. And, uh, and so this uh, particular machine is a two station. It cleans them, uh, sanitizes, sterilizes them, and then fills it uh, with cool, ready to go carbonated beer. And the, uh, we do bottle beer here. And uh, looks like we're getting ready to uh, fire some of that up a little bit later today because we want to uh, get some, some beer in fresh bottles. Just a small bottling line that allows us to do about 20 bottles a minute. Not high speed by any stretch of the imagination, but it gets the job done. Yep, Carol over here is uh, bottling up wine. And uh, basically we, what we do is we, uh, at this stage here, he's now just uh, racking it into the bottles. Uh, we've already processed what needs to be processed. As you can see in the bottles, it's crystal clear as it's supposed to be. And so um, he's finishing it off with, a, uh, uh, with, with corks, labels, and whatnot. And then we'll final finish it with a, uh, a shrink wrap sleeve up top. This is the cold storage. Yes. Kegs, bottles. Don't have too many bottles in here right now. Got some root beer and a few cases of beer, but stuff doesn't last too long here. We just finished our tour here with Jeff, the brewmaster here, and tell us a little bit about some of the samplings of what you have here and kind of what's, what's the difference between the beers for the novices. Absolutely. Uh, the sampling is kind of like a progression. I believe it wholeheartedly in the idea of education, taking people from point A to, to point B, so to speak. And so as we start here on the total left, this is my crossover beer. This is for people who typically um, enjoy like a, a, a regular mass-produced beer. They really like the light beers and so forth. This one uh, is exactly that. It's a very light beer, but it's made with 100% uh, malted barley. And so it's going to have some flavor to it that they might not be used to. But it's very, very easy to drink. goes with a lot of great things. This is a typical ale. This is a beer that we would produce in 14 days. It would be done and very easy to, well, to go taste. with. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I will too. Hey, I, I'm not shy about that. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that with a pizza or yes. something like that. Absolutely. Very easy to uh, go with. Now the second beer, this particular beer here is a very traditional German Hefeweizen. Hefe in German means uh, heavy. Weizen is wheat, so it's heavy wheat. So you have at least 50% of this has wheat in it. So I don't use all malted barley. I use a good portion of wheat in it. And, and so what you have first off is you have a very cloudy beer. This is very traditional. Some people might uh, know this from uh, or, or have something very uh, similar to this in the taste profile if they would do like a mass-produced beer like a Blue Moon or something like that. But this one here, the flavors that are in it are total uh, only and wholeheartedly come from just fermentation. It's not flavorings I add or anything. You're going to notice up front a very outstanding kind of banana smell and flavor to it. It kind of hits you when you drink it, you Most know? definitely. Absolutely. I guess the banana, you don't expect that in the beer. It's, it's very, very, very pronounced. And, and the, again, this is a byproduct of, of fermentation. It goes very well with uh, anything kind of light, whether it's a, a light salad. be honest with you, bananas fosters for a dessert, this, this will rock it out for sure. I mean, it varies a, a very easy to drink. A lot of people love to put a slice of orange in it or something like that. It works very well. The next beer is a uh, traditional German Pilsner. Uh, this is a beer that, uh, um, you know, people recognize the name Pilsner, but a German Pilsner has a little bit different flavor nuances in it, uh, more so in the end. I mean, you're gonna see that it's clear, that it has a, you know, a crisp smell and, and it's very clean, but it, has, it finishes with a, just a little bit of a bite on the end. Very traditional for a, uh, a German Pilsner. This goes good with a lot of things. I, I think of a nice burger, uh, that type. Pepperoni pizza works well too, you know. This is like an all around, hey, you mow the lawn and uh, drink this, it's okay. <laughs> and we're hearing it from the master. We're hearing it from the master. Absolutely. We're gonna skip the next one because we're gonna save that one for last. Always save the best for last, so to speak. Uh, the, the next one here is a, uh, a red, it's a uh, red ale. I call it red sky. It's kind of like that old saying, red sky in the morning, sailors take warning, mm -hmm. red sky at night, sailors delight. Definitely a delightful beer if you wait till evening. Um, you know, it's got a, a malt flavor to it, uh, which is really nice. And I think you'll... You know, 
some, I love my job. Yes. I love my job. This <laughs> Me is too. Tough. This is really tough. <laughs> Absolutely. This goes great with like stews, chilies, uh, that type of stuff, because it's a little bit artier, has a, a malt uh, flavor to it. The next one here, uh, this is a very traditional style German, uh, it's a dark beer, and it's called a Munich uh, Dunkel. Uh, Dunkel, or correctly pronounced, Dunkel in German means dark. And so this is a dark German lager. This is another one of those that uh, we cold store it for a period of time. And what's unique about this, most people look at a dark beer and they're thinking, oh my gosh, it's going to be bitter, it's going to be heavy, it's going to be... This is quite absolutely the opposite of that, and it's because of the style of beer. Being that it's a lager, it's going to be have smoothness to it, a little bit more of a crispness to it, and it's very easy to drink. As a matter of fact, I love this with Oreo cookies. Really? Yes. I know, I know last night I tried this, and I thought it was going to be bitter, yeah. but I was pleasantly surprised. Absolutely. as good today as it was last Absolutely. Night. Oreo cookies, German chocolate cake, it goes great with all of them. <laughs> a dessert wine, or is a dessert beer. Kind of, say. absolutely. <laughs> the last one we're going to try is a American IPA. And uh, the reason we saved this one for last is because the flavor is so explosive, it can, it can impede the tasting of some of the other ones down the line. And American IPA um, simply means IPA stands for India Pale Ale. It's a style of beer. And simply what it is is that uh, it means that there's a lot more hops and you put them more often when you're brewing the beer. And so it's going to have some explosive flavor. Because this is an American, it uses a, um, American hops and the resulting flavor is twofold. You're going to have citrusy and piney. And those are going to come at you and almost hit you in the face. Well, but it's... Prost! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It goes great with a spicy dish. Absolute spicy dish this works great with. You know, but then again, I like the flavor of yep. beer. I can just sit and just enjoy the beer. <laughs> Absolutely, me too. And and very much so. But sometimes with beer you, you can drink a little more if you have some food. That's true. You know, carbs always work good with beer. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for taking your time today. And if you guys are ever up in Frankenbooth, be sure to stop here at the Frankenbooth Brewery. Uh, stop and schedule a tour. Absolutely. Yeah, they'll, they'll be happy to give you a tour. The food is, you know, fabulous. And of course, I have a little work in front of me. So back to the show. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Thank Our you. Our website is www.frankenmuthbury.com. Um, we work closely with the Chamber of Commerce, so they have a lot of our information as well. Our phone number is 989-262-8300. And then these two are, um, are um, uh, these two here. Take a step. Yeah. Take a, take, pause it just real quick. Yep. I know it's a light kick down. Okay, he's going to stop here a minute. Yep. <laughs> All right.